Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick, aka The Limey, and on this one, we're talking about something I've been waiting for for just over one year. Since the launch of the PlayStation 5, which I was lucky enough to get on launch day, and I have a video unboxing it, whichever side of the, the screen it goes, um, I've had my PlayStation 5 since pretty much launch day. I think with some delivery issues and a few delays, it arrived the day after launch day. So it did finally arrive. And when it came, it was massive. Since then, we've put the, the uh, D-brand dark plates on the PlayStation 5. We've put the robot camo that matches my mobile phone. And there's a video of me unboxing this, the Pixel Pro 6, and sticking on the good old outfit here. Um, since then, I've been waiting for one more accessory to arrive. It's taken a while, and I can imagine with the shortages of PlayStations and all those sorts of things, I can kind of understand why. Um, but just around Christmas time, around the 20th of December, I received an email, and the email was from Scuff. And I've been looking forward to this email for quite a while, saying, hey, you, you over there, Gamer Boy, we've got the new PlayStation 5 SCUF controller. Now, my first instinct was just to take out my credit card and throw it straight at my phone and hope that worked. But obviously that's not how you go about getting SCUF controllers. I read a bit further down the email and it said that there's a limited amount, first come, first serve. There I was trying to buy my SCUF controller. I waited in queue for around 45 minutes, reloading and refreshing the web page, and I finally got to the order page to be told, hey, you can have one, stick it in the basket, but we're sold out. The next email came in saying, don't worry, panic you not, gamer boy, we've got you. We'll get some more out in the next few weeks. And a few days later, another email came in saying, hey, still interested? We've got another limited time drop. Exactly the same thing. I jumped in the queue, I waited for about half an hour, 45 minutes to get my hands on a scuff, and I finally managed to order one. When they launched the scuff for the PlayStation 5, they did it in three flavors. They've released the Reflex, the Reflex Pro, and the Reflex FPS. And the Reflex FPS, first person shooter, is going to be released sometime this year in 2022. Um, but really, you didn't get an option. It was a kind of, uh, you want a scuff? Buy one. This is what you're getting. You don't get a choice of colours, you don't get a choice of anything. Buy one. And pretty much, that's what I did. So they, they had me hook, line and sinker. No chance I wasn't picking up a brand new scuff reflex. This arrived just before New Year's. I've been playing with it for a few weeks now and I absolutely love it. So let me show you why I wanted a scuff. So this came in the mail. Now I've taken off my hoodie because I realised I'm sat on a black chair with a black hoodie and a black box and effectively a black controller. So let's try and make it a bit easier for you, to, you guys to see. I've daring the winter weather in a t-shirt for you guys but this is the box that arrived in the post and as ever with scuff they do a really good job with packing with the quality i mean you're paying a fair chunk for a controller so it's the least that you would expect a nice little flip box and everything was all packaged up nice and beautifully now as i said i've been playing with the controller for a couple of weeks now, and I absolutely love it. And as you all know, I play Destiny. I play Destiny 2, and it's a first-person shooter, which is why I wanted one of these controllers. Um, just to put it into comparison of the standard PlayStation 5 controller, they look pretty much identical from the front. It's the back where mine has a few more buttons, okay? So what's so special about the back of the scuff reflex and in fact any of the scuff controllers and the answer is they come with paddles so i've got an additional four buttons that really help me play any of the first person shooters or pretty much any game that i want while playing video games so 
I just heard a really good analogy of, of why you don't ever want to remove your fingers from your thumbsticks. And it's kind of like, if you're playing with a mouse, you want to be able to do everything with those two fingers or those two buttons. And you can, and then you've got some side buttons for your thumb. But you never want to put the mouse down. You don't want to have to move to where you want to go and then go over to your keyboard and press space, right? And it's kind of the same thing. You've got to imagine that this paddle here is exactly the same as your mouse button. This is the one in Destiny specifically, most first person shooters, that moves your character from where he's looking or she's looking or they or them or whatever their pronouns are. But that's the one that moves them around the screen, okay? This one is your run, your jump, your slide, your whatever that one is. That one's not quite so important, but again, you don't really have anything on that side of the controller that you need to ever take your thumb off. If you want to do an emote, you've got them there, but generally you're not in the height of battle and kind of going, I'm just going to eat some popcorn now. Um, so that thumb is pretty, pretty sticky. This one is where you've got to take your thumb off to press the buttons, okay? So while you're running around and while you're trying to shoot, you've also got to take your thumb off that button to press the jump button, the reload button, the change weapon button, or the crouch button. Crouch button, I remembered them, okay? So what Scuff have allowed us to do is to remap the back four buttons to match the front four buttons, okay? In fact, you can actually map them to pretty much anything you want. If I wanna make that the melee, which is push down on, push down on the right thumbstick, I can make that just dedicated to a melee, okay? So let me show you in game sort of how that works um, and, and just how it makes your life so much easier. So, so as ever, exactly the same as the PlayStation controller, you've got your power button right in the middle. Obviously that one's PS branded. This one's just a generic home button. You've got exactly the same mute function. So press it once to mute your microphone, press and hold mutes all audio into the PlayStation 5. There you go, press it twice to get it back off. You've got your big button that does the, in Destiny, um, it raises your ghost, and you've got your capture button and your option button. Now the one thing I've always found frustrating is I don't actually know which button's which. I'm pretty sure that that button's X. I know that button's triangle, but those two, square and circle, I never really have a clue. I know that one is crouch, one is reload, one is, one is reload, uh, one is crouch. Uh, again, you see, without playing it, I don't actually know what they do. My body and my brain just knows what they do. So let me launch Destiny, and then we can get into it from there. So just while Destiny 2 is booting up, I just thought I'd touch on one of the core cool things that I think they've done on the Reflex. So in days gone by, if you had a scuff controller, you normally need to pay extra for a remapping key. So the remapping key meant that you could change which buttons did what on the back of your scuff. So for instance, I said, if I've got this one as X, which means I jump in Destiny, it could mean in a different game, a race car game, for instance, it's handbrake. And that's not what I want. So catching that, because that's my habit, is gonna keep making me do handbrakes. Um, so what you can do is you can remap them to something else. So what they've done on this one is they've given us actual profiles. So if I press the little button in the back of the controller, you should see it glows red. So my Destiny 2 profile is built into the red light. And then if I go to the green profile, that's a different layout as well. And then I've got a blue profile as well. So I can run up to three different variations. Now, again, that could mean that I could run one setup for playing generic Destiny 2 PVE, player versus environment. And I could change that setting for when I'm playing Destiny 2 PVP, player versus player, because I may need to have different things. And I might think it's important to have different things enabled and on certain keys. So that's quite cool. I haven't got to mess around with changing the remapping and stuff like that. One thing that is absent from this is the, the trigger stop. So in my PS4 scuff that I had, I had a trigger stop, which meant that I didn't have to do a full pull every single time I wanted to shoot a gun. It gave me a little trigger stop. But these triggers feel a bit more shallow than the old DS4 and the old scuffs for the PlayStation 4. 
And the other thing about that was when we did racing games, uh, specifically when we were playing in Destiny 2 and we needed to jump on our Sparrow, which is our speeder bikes, when you pulled down your left trigger, I think it's left trigger or right trigger, whichever trigger it was, to make it go faster, it wouldn't go quite as fast as everyone else because it wasn't a full pull, okay? So they are absent and you do notice them, but it has got that PlayStation 5 full pull treatment on it. So what I'll do is I'm gonna quickly load in on my Titan, my main character that I play in Destiny 2. Um, I'm just gonna drop down to the Cosmodrome. Now the Cosmodrome is the first area that you ever really explore in Destiny 2 when you actually, or in Destiny in the game, when you do load it up. So while that's loading up, there's a few other little things that I do quite like. On the bog standard PlayStation controller, it's just a hard plastic and it has got a nice sort of texture grip and you do feel like you've definitely got hold of that. On the scuff, now this was always an extra, something when you customized your scuffs, and like I said, when this came out, it was, do you want one or not? That was the option, yes or no. Not what color do you want, which version do you want? Do you want this, that, and the other? No, do you want one? Because we've got some, we're selling them. If not, move down the line, someone else will buy it. So on this one, we've got a rubberized texture here, which is actually really nice. It really does give you a lovely grip and it is really, really tactile. And it makes you put your fingers in the right place. So, where are we? What are we doing? Okay, cool, there's a chest over here. So I haven't mapped one to jump, okay? I've got weapon change is this one. So that's my triangle button. I'm gonna pull my old PlayStation controller in front of me so I make sure I get, get the right ones. So triangle for me is, uh, that's change weapon, okay? So you can change, if I push triangle, it goes to a heavy weapon, okay? So exactly the same on the back paddle, on this one here, I've got triangle to change weapon, and if I push and hold it, it goes to the rocket launcher, okay? So the square button when you're playing Destiny is the reload button. So if I press the square button, you do a reload animation. If I use my right side trigger, I've got the exact same thing. I've got my reload. So I've got change weapon and reload are the two that I probably use the most. I don't find jump to be a problem. So if I'm shooting, I wanna be able to zoom in, strafe, and either change weapon or reload all at the same time without ever, as I said, taking my thumbs, especially this one, off of the thumbsticks. I don't find jumping to be such a problem because it is right there and normally if you're running, you can jump and then while you're in your jump, you can do the thing you need to do, okay? Uh, let me go back to this barrier here. So the other thing that the square button does, so again, your square button, I'll keep changing the different layout here. So your square button is, is this button right here. And again, for me, it's this one right here. It means that I can start a patrol, but more importantly, if I'm playing PVP, something like the Trials of Osiris where you can revive your teammates, that button is my revive button. So I can still, by using that finger, revive my teammate while shooting, while aiming, and while still moving. So I can do all of those things at the same time while reviving my, my uh, teammates, okay? So the circle button on the PlayStation, uh, the PS5 controller is this one over here. And that for me is crouch. And I have that one mapped on the back. So I've got reload and then I've got crouch, okay? So the other thing on this one is if you push and hold it, it will do the character's intrinsic sort of ability. So for the Titan, he puts up a Titan wall. For the Hunter, he does a dodge and for the Warlock, you'll throw down a healing well, okay? So I've got that right there because my finger, this finger here, is the one that I use for reload and I just push it ever so slightly, the tip of my finger, and that's what holds my, that's what holds that one down. So the only button I don't have mirrored is the X button, which is jump, and that's the same on all of the characters. I don't have that on the back because I don't think I'm as dexterous enough. Dexterous, dexterous, dexterous. I don't think I've got the mobility in my fingers to be able to use this button as jump. So what I actually have it mapped at is melee. And that one is your running stick and it's there. But the problem is sometimes when you're running, 
you might not get your melee. So I've got it there for the same reason I can change weapon or I can just roll my finger over ever so slightly and I can do that, okay? So just while we're here, I'm gonna change the profile to the green. I've got no idea what that one does. Oh, so this now does all of the emotes, okay? So what is, oh, I've gotta remember all these. What is reload is the, is the right cursor. What is, what is, what's that one normally? That's the second, the flat back one there. That's the uh, top cursor, the up arrow. That one is the bottom arrow, and then this one over here is the other arrow. So that's the that's the green profiles, and on blue, right. So this now becomes duck, and the uh, Titan ability. This one becomes triangle change weapon. So duck is circle. Is that right? Yeah. So that's circle. Perfect. The first one's circle, the second one becomes triangle, the third one isn't mapped to anything, and the fourth one is X, okay? So, as I said, I don't think I'm I'm that dexterity, dex, I haven't got the dexterity to be able to utilize this in gameplay, okay? So, that is, for me, why I've got them mapped as I do. So the other nice thing that they've done with the scuff controller is they've actually shipped it with a second set of thumbsticks. So historically, you get on the PlayStation 5 controllers, you get these little, little sorcery type ones that are quite flat with a little bit of a lip on it. And what I find is that they're fine for everyday sort of in general play, but because I play quite intense, uh, video game sessions. I normally play sort of a three, four, five hours. If I'm streaming, I'll play for eight hours in a day. I need a bit more comfort, a bit more ease. And what you'll, what I find is I use the edges of my thumbs opposed to the whole thumb on top because as I said, I don't have massive hands. So you'll just wrap all the way around there, hold it comfortably and still control it. I generally use that part of my thumb just rolling around the edge. And because they are nice and grippy, it's never really been a problem, okay? And then I have to shifty my thumb onto it a little bit for that melee or the slide or the whatever the other buttons do, okay? So what they've done on the scuff controllers is they've shipped them, and in fairness for the price, it should have come with a second scuff controller. They've shipped them with spare um, thumbsticks. Now these ones are domed, and on the controller they're concaved. So. So what used to happen with scuff controllers is you used to have to package them up, you'd send scuff an email, you'd get a returns form, you'd get everything sent to you, you'd have to box it up, and then you'd ship your 150, 200 pound controller back to scuff, which wasn't really a problem because it's scuff, you kind of trust them, but during that time, you're back to playing a bit like a poor peasant with your boring controller that doesn't have paddles on the back. And that's what you find. You find when you're playing, you end up sort of beating the back of it like a little drum, okay? So you're not used to playing with it. So that for me was the biggest pain, was the inconvenience, and I'm not gonna start buying multiple scuffs just for when they go wrong, I've got a spare scuff. That seems a bit more extravagant than we really need in our lives, doesn't it? So what they used to do is they used to send you a, um, a key, so you could put the key over the top, you'd be able to unlock the ring that held the thumbstick in place, and then you'd be able to yank the thumbstick out, replace it yourself, and then put the key back in and locking the uh, the ring. So the ring is on the front of the instruction book. It's the bit that's covered orange, colored orange, okay? So you would pop them off, pop the thumbsticks out, and away you go. And you could do it yourself relatively inexpensively, apart from having to keep thumbsticks in stock. So um, I've not done this yet because I've been waiting to do this video to do it, but. What they've done on this is they've actually made it so you can literally pop off the front of your scuff controller. Now, things like this always get me a bit nervous. When you're paying the sort of money you're paying for a scuff controller, little bits of flimsy plastic being peeled off, it's a little bit intense. So as a word of warning, there's two little, oh, who are you? I'm Batman. As a word of warning, you've got two little tabs here and they tuck under 
the big square button or rectangular button so make sure that when you put them back in you stick them down and then click it in place and not try and force it because they will get snapped off and i'm guessing you'll have flappy bits of plastic but this is quite a thing <laughs> and i wonder if they sell spares or you can maybe change the color of these i'm guessing there's someone doing aftermarket versions of these already so that's one of the bits i'm going to turn my controller off for no reason other than just i don't want to keep Come on, turn off. Wireless controller is disconnected. Now, I'm assuming I just pull. Yeah. And the flat one comes off. I'll try and get that in focus so you guys can see if I stick it right my face. That's the little concaved one. Now, what is nice is they've got a little bit of a carbon fiber effect on them. And then I'll take the domed one. Now, these aren't massively domed, but ever so slightly domed. And they are set a certain way. So make sure you get them the right way around. There's a little, a little dimple. <laughs> oh yeah, see that feels nicer already. Okay, perfect. And then we have the fun of replacing this piece. So as I said, make sure you took those two little points in first. Eh. I'm not doing any overheads or any funky camera on this, so you have to just take my word for it. And then just click it all back in place. So I do like that you can do all this yourself. It's quite nice. They've made it self-sufficient. But the problem is that these ends really are quite flimsy and if you're playing a bit of an intense game, sometimes you're playing Destiny or any video games, probably one of the scary games where you've got lots of jump scares and stuff like that, you probably grab onto that controller ever so slightly harder than is intended. And I do feel that these pop out a little bit or move a little bit. So I'm not sure I actually like that as a design feature, but again, from a usability point of view, being able to replace my thumbsticks myself saves me a lot of time, effort, and that was quicker than unflicking the keys. So now I've got a spare Concave, I've also got a spare dome, so it means I've actually got a spare set to replace the uh, left thumbstick, which I keep concave because that's where my thumb rests in the little dimple because that one never comes off. And then, like I said, the round one just gives me a bit better grab and able to just to move it around a little bit easier. So one thing just to be aware of is that scuffs are um, infamous for uh, a drift. So while you're playing a game, your character might just start to drift ever so slightly. And it's probably down to where you change that thumbstick. I should make sure it's all in the right place. You see, it doesn't feel... That's the only, my only criticism is that bit of plastic, if you smash the thumbstick side to side, you can feel the plastic wobbling. I know you're not really supposed to jam them and smash them and stuff side to side. But that is just one of the things that you do with a controller, isn't it? So so what they've done is they allowed us to be a bit more self-sufficient. So, um, and this one really is scary. Um, so what you have to do to take the paddles off is just, just give them a yank down. And there's a little bit of friction and tension. And you've just got to be brave, it's a bit like, like pulling a tooth out and you'll find you get a paddle and that's one paddle and then you can take out the second paddle so what i found is quite a nice way to do it is put your fingernail in the seam and then just give that a bit of a pull and then when they get to a certain point just give them a little bit of a tug and you get a second paddle now it's important to do them in the right order because obviously they sit like that as a pair. So if you try and pull this one off, it's gonna be connected to this one. So make sure you pull the back paddle out first and then the second one. And reinstalling them is exactly the same, just do it in reverse, I guess. So if you've got any problems and your paddles snap, I'm, again, I'm assuming you'll be able to reach out to Scuff and for a small mortgage, uh, they will send you some new replacement paddles for it oh it really is one of those things it's, it's the first time i replaced thumbsticks on a bog standard ds4 i did it with a youtube video in front of me and electronics uh no uh, gamestop website 
trying to work out where the nearest tech store was that I could buy a replacement DS4 because I had that much faith that I was gonna break my DS4 controller, okay? And they do literally just slide back in exactly the same way as you pop them out and they all work perfectly well, okay? So if you do happen to break any of them, it's completely replaceable and the thumbsticks themselves are now completely replaceable. Now, the big question is, is it value for money? And honestly, no. A new one of these is around 50 pounds. A new one of these is, well, I'm not gonna say how much these cost because my wife watches these videos, but a new one of these is quite expensive. It's almost as much as the markup that was on PlayStation 5s when they were selling pre-Christmas. Um, are they worth it? No. Are they lovely to have and nice things? Definitely. Is it something that I really enjoy using? Yeah. No one uses this control in my household. If my kids want to play on the PlayStation, little peasants, they get to use one of these bog standard white ones. I didn't even buy a black one to match the black dark plates because I knew I was going to be getting a, re uh, a, a reflex. Um, so again, is it worth the money? I don't honestly know. It's a nice to have, it's something lovely to own, it's something that makes my enjoyment of the game playing a little nicer, uh, having that back paddles. Does it make me a better player? That's my fire team. I think they still think I suck. Seven or eight years in, still not the greatest Destiny 2 player, but really enjoy the game. And this little bad boy adds an extra bit of enjoyment to my gameplay. That's why I bought it. Guys, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who watches my videos. Please make sure that you leave me a comment. Let me know if you've tried to get a scuff for the PS5. If you're a PC player, actually, if you are a PC player, the reflex does work on PC. All you can do, all you need to do for a basic connection is just whack in the USB-C charging cable, connect it to your PC, and it will work on your PC as it does on your PlayStation 5. Um, if you're playing it through the Xbox or something like that, the Games Pass on your PC, I have Destiny on both systems. I never ever play it on my PC. I only ever play it on my PlayStation 5. Dedicated machine purely for Destiny. Um, so it is compatible with the uh, PC as well as the PlayStation 5. But as I was about to say, if you're enjoying the videos, let me know. Leave a comment down below if you want to get a scuff, if you're trying to get a scuff, if you've tried to get a scuff and failed, or you know, you've been told, you're not having a scuff. No, 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 no. You're not wasting money on stuff like that. Make sure that you like this video. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you can see any future updates. I might post the one where my wife finds out I bought one of these and how much they cost. And um, if I'm in one of the next videos, the black eye, you understand why. Um, but make sure you like them. Make sure you leave a comment. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. If the subscribe button is red, do me a favor, just click it till it goes gray and it'll disappear.